Hello everyone. If you remember the last presentation we had together and the last tutorial, we had a very simple case of a mass source and a pipeline which ended in a riser. And we observed this train slugging phenomenon in the riser and uh, we investigated few uh, mitigation methodology to uh, get rid of this slug training at the end. So if you remember one of the methods was to uh, to 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 increase the mass flow rate uh, from 5 to 15 and uh, when we did that and we, when we when we simulated the case for two hours and observed the QLT at the end we saw that uh, we saw that this train slugging has been uh, has been gone for example you can see it here again as well so you can see that the train slugging is gone but uh, at the same time if you if you go back to this uh, trend plot or uh, the, the profile plot and you try to plot ID for the pipeline you see at some point uh, during the time you have this slug ID tree which resembles the slug flow so still uh, no matter if you have a slug training in the riser there are some parts in the uh, in the pipeline, in the, in the flow path itself, that this log exists. So in this tutorial, I'm going to uh, to insert this uh, FA model, this flow assurance model, this log tracking that you have, and uh, we can investigate how this log tracking method works. So right click on the on the case itself, go to FA models, and insert the log tracking method. Uh, not the slug tuning, but the slug tracking. One more time, I'll go to uh, FA model, and then the slug tracking, and make sure to to switch the hydrodynamic to on, which means that this time you have hydrodynamic slug tracking, and uh, let's keep this uh, gas entertainment method uh, to avoid the slug. You have two methods: you have needle and void the slug, and then. If you go back to this flow path and then go to output and just add some trend data like uh, uh, like uh, liquid content, uh, I have to go to this general variable. I can ch look for accumulated liquid and if you activate that one, this will give you the accumulated liquid at let's say pipe 7 and uh, the last section which is section 2 so if I do that and then I'll just stop this simulation and go to this uh, integration and change the max DT from 5 seconds to 2 seconds and I decrease the max DT a little bit uh, down and still have this end time to 2 hours Let's simulate this case and see what sort of information we get from this simulation. So now you can see that the simulation is running is slower, much slower than when you have this slug tracking off. So it may take a few seconds until the simulation finish. But at the same time, you can look at the QLT, for example, again, for the same pipeline, 7 and section 3. And this time, you can see that the slug tracking method has been switched on, and the QLT, which is total liquid volume flow, is kind of oscillating in time, resembling uh, the typical slug flow transient uh, phenomenon. Uh, let's see if the simulation is finished then I can press continue and then uh, go back to my home page and uh, for example I can plot this uh, surge liquid it shows the surge liquid volume and it's auto generated from the accumulated liquid if I press OK you see that this surge liquid volume uh, is plotted uh, versus time this means that uh, actually this is an automated value from Olga itself and uh, 
it can it it um, kind of uh, it kind of uh, assumes that uh, the drain rate at the end of the pipeline equals uh, the average value of the QLT in the pipeline and based on that uh, drain liquid volume it calculate the surge liquid in the separator or the at the end facilities but uh, if you want to ca calculate the surge liquid volume based on the information you have you can simply click on edit and uh, go to this surge volume and then here you can see that for example the Q max which is given at that position is set to 14 uh, 800 uh, no 1486 cubic meter per day which is the average QLT at that pipeline at that section but if you have um, if you know this uh, drain or the Q max the drain rate of your separator or whatever the end facility is you can simply <clears throat> change it to for example 1400 1, uh, cubic meter per day and just click apply and then you see this maximum surge volume has been increased in time as well. So you see that the maximum surge volume you can get from the drain rate of 1400 is 7.2 cubic meter at uh, something around 7000 second or at the end of the simulation. But uh, for example if you increase it to let's say 1500 this time meaning that you have this maximum <coughs> drain rate of 1500 cubic meter per day at your end facilities at your uh, separator whatever it has then you see that the surge liquid volume from the separator is much much lower and the maximum you can see is 0.11 cubic meter so this means that by increasing the the drain rate uh, obviously you get much less drain or surge volume but if you if I just put it put this value to zero meaning that you have no drain then you see what you get is equal to this accumulated liquid at the end of pipeline so if I keep this one and just go back to trend and try to plot this accumulated liquid at pipe one section two then you see these two are exactly the same so no drain rate um, surge volume will be equal to accumulated uh, liquid rate so you can uh, so you have seen how this slot tracking is actually working and uh, um, on top of that there are some other trend data that you can add uh, for this log tracking for example if you go back to output and uh, put the trend data again and uh, go to this general and val variable and uh, by searching LSL you can see that you can also you can have this slug length so if I just click on LSL experimental you will see that you have a slug length uh, which is like a statistic a statistical information and uh, you can have it for uh, I don't know for all the pipes for example so you can add all the pipes and put section number two and then just run it run the simulation again and see what sort of information this LSL experiment is giving us so you can see that LSL experiment which is a slug length is already available and if I click on that you will see that at different time for different positions for different pipelines this log length are quite different so if I look at for example uh, pipe uh, 2 only if I if you look at the beginning of the pipeline let's say pipe 2 and pipe 3 and pipe 4 you see that <clears throat> this log length is uh, quite a small compare, uh, compared to to this log length at the end of the pipeline so this means that this log is growing toward the end of uh, toward the end of the pipeline 
but again at pipeline 5 the slug length is quite small and uh, seems like there is almost no slug at pipeline 5 so this was the very basic tutorial about this slug tracking method how you can use it how you can activate it and when exactly you need to activate this slug tracking uh, I hope you have learned something and uh, I'll come back with uh, other tutorials later uh, more complex uh, geometries or perhaps more complex uh, flow assurance uh, uh, issues thank you very much uh, until next time